testify he's good. Hallelujah, he's good. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
there for the entire child. And this is only three weeks ago, so you know the miscarriage, you know, when we used to say was, you know, induced. And uh, you know, I just you know, even though
with how Pastor Mike, it's a blessing how Pastor Mike uh, to speak the man, to be the man of God, speak the word. Yeah. And, and everybody in this house tonight, in the house tonight, I appreciate it. Now, God bless you all. I see the life of everybody in here and everybody not in here right now. I see the life of everybody. Thank you. 
Don trying to get your attention. I'm like, man, that dude out the hospital. You can already put like condemnation on me. I'm like, what are you trying to tell me? I ain't living in sin. I don't have no, you know what I mean? I don't have nothing I can look at and say this is a problem. But I knew, uh, but it did wake me up. I mean, for him to say, the person saying it did wake me up and say, you know, it's not God trying to get my attention. It's trying to get my attention, trying to show me the devil is real. Yes. And he's after his saints. Yes. So if you know you got a word or something new for yes. God, he's going to come after you. Yes. You're not just going to skate by. And no. Be mad at you for trying to help you. Yes, sir. You know? And I looked at it and I said, but God is stronger. Yes, so he I is. The devil tried to do. I got up from that position and walked my way down. Praise able to go. I mean, I had an option. I don't want to go to the hospital or not. And everybody who saw me didn't realize what happened to me because I was walking like I was normal. You know, when I walked around like nothing was wrong with me. And they were like, there ain't nothing wrong with you. When they seen the action, what actually happened on the video, they were like, oh, my God. You know, how are you up walking around like this? America. And I said, but I said, I already know that God will be with you yes. wherever you go. Whatever going on with yes, you, this is time and time and time again. For the devil tried to put my life out. Why, well, you know, saw that this is it. This is over. I'm about to be out of here. Because a head injury landing on the back of your head is dead. The front, because yes. the back has points in it that yes. stab the brain, is yes. killed. But there yes. was no bleeding. Right. There was no fracture. I mean, like I said to your point, it's almost That's like almost two feet from that wall landing over here on your head on rock. And there's no way that should have been more damage. You know what I mean? Everybody looked at it, even the doctor would have said, oh my God. You know, at amazement, but I'm like, it's not me. That angel and that Jesus Christ, oh, yes. when we down to our last, if you don't think Jesus Christ didn't work, I abused it over it and over and it over works. and over. It works. If yes, you're in a does. bad situation, yes. call on the name of Jesus. Yes. All I can get out of Jesus help me. And when I, when I know, yes. when I, even when I, I had another bad incident, I said those same words. And the people, every person that saw me said, the person that had the accident went said, I don't even want to go back there because I don't want to see a dead man. He's dead. I don't want to see him. And I walked up out that hospital as well. That Praise same evening. God. And everybody said, he's like, God, God. how in the world are you still, you should be dead. God. You know, I said, the devil's been good at his job. But Jesus is. And the power of God is real. You know, God just sometimes showing his people, hey man, I'm here. Yes. I'm not a figment of your imagination. I'm He's as real here. as it gets. You know what I mean? When it comes down time for you to, you know, when it comes to faith hits the road, Jesus is with his people. Yes, he is. And he ain't let nothing on you see. You said God said you'll make your bones fat. The scripture coming alive. You know what I mean? Where yes. God will make your bones fat. I, I, said, I, I said, I thought for sure when I got up. I said, my head is cracked for sure. I know for a fact there's a hole in my head all the way and my brain is hanging out. But it wasn't. Thank you, Lord. That's the Lord. He didn't even see a fracture, no brain. I mean, nothing was wrong, no bleeding, nothing. I know another young man who had a similar accident. He had to have his skull taken out. So his brain was expanding. And then he went through seizures and all kind of stuff. God let me just get up and walk away like that. Mercy on you. You know, God is good. I'm telling you. When it comes down to it, God is with his people. Yes, he is. So call on the name of Jesus. That means you will be saved. Yes, you will. I tell you, God is here to prove to us, us that he's with us. Hallelujah. Let's get a lot of hand praise. Hallelujah. I don't know what it is to say, but God has put some boldness in it. Uh, praise because I need to. Director, uh, to pastor and a first lady, I just had to get some advice uh, from my family. Uh, I plan to attempt to run for Albany this year or next year because I'm so disgusted with how the city is starting to look. And I feel somebody has to do something about it. Maybe I don't have the qualifications to run for something in the office, but I just need some advice. Should I do that or not? Pray about it. Pray about it. I just need to come out to kill. Pray about it. I, I, I feel like I'm, I, I'm in a the losing uh, fight battle here uh, uh, seeing the city, how it's turning out to be every day. And I need to see some advice. Just, just sitting around and not being able to do things. 
service to his hands. Father, in Jesus' name, we bow our heads and bow our hearts to you on today. Thank you for your grace and for your spirit. Lord, we know it's a little different on today, but our eyes are on you. Lord, our hearts are reaching towards you. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in the lives of your people, how so many have a testimony. Thank you for bringing Isaiah here in the midst today. Bless him. In his life, Lord, shine on him by the grace of God, by the Holy Ghost. Move for all those that's testifying. Brother Rodney, Lord, give him wisdom, lead him, guide him. Lord, in what your will is for his life. Lord, if your will be done, not our will. Lord, we ask you to give him that wisdom of God, what to do. Lord, we pray for all the needs. Lord, we can't do anything without you. Lord, we be mindful of our sick on the day, those that's battling in their bodies. We ask you, Lord, to deliver them, break these yokes, these demons of sickness and disease. Brother Morris, Lord, thank you for his health, his strength, Sister Connie. Continue to heal and deliver and break their yokes. Mom and Pop Smith and Pop Henderson, Brother Akon, Lord, Brother Maddox down in, Lord, where he's at, Georgia, Lord, Brother Altman, Pastor Fuller up in Decatur, Lord, you see all the needs that we've been holding up in prayer. We ask you to heal, deliver Sister Tawanda, Lord, break every yoke off her body. Give her a full recovery. Restore health and strength unto her. Sister Triplett, Lord, help her in her spirit, help her in her faith, help her in her mind. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray for all our needs. Lord, touch Brother Terrell. Lord, just turning, Lord, 89 years old. Lord. Lord, touch him and bless and strengthen him. In the name of Jesus, his wife as well. Lord, we pray for all your people and all the need. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord as you see it. Amen. Thank God. We appreciate you being in the house of the Lord. Good to have my brother, nephew, and sister Shante in the service. That was a shock when I came in the door. Amen. I got out of the car and said, I know that black car from somewhere. I just couldn't get it together. And I walked in the door and I figured it out. There they are. Good to have them in the service. 
Amen. Brother Jeff. Amen. My nephew. He's talking about us aggravating. We all aggravate Brother Jeffrey. Amen. And he gives it out just as good as he gets. It's all right. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. I love him to death, but I, I, he gets on my last nerve. Praise the Lord. But he knows I love him. And he sure gets on my nerves. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Amen. And I think he gets on all of our nerves, but we love him to death. Thank God for sparing him. I mean, you, you see that video, and you say, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise him. My wife, she, she started she start crying out. And then Sister Green, I was looking at it. She came in the office and looked at it on the church got cameras down there. And save people is crazy. If it's on the video, it already happened. Ain't nothing you can do to change it. Sister Green saw it. She started praying, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. I said, I said Sister Green, it's already happened. <laughs> but if you saw it. Man, you, you, you really are. I got on my phone. I mean, th this machine, it's a big old eight foot hill back the back wow. of the church. And the machine backed up and started tipping over. Oh and he God. tried to get out of it. Woo. And when he tried to get out on the side that was tipping, it actually slingshotted him back oh, down below on his head and oh, on his back. Lord. And I, I told him, you know, I give God all praise. Right. Thank you. I give God all the praise. Yeah. But I told him, I said, I can't discount the fact that your head is also so hard. But, you know, we thank God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I got family just like y'all got family. Praise the Lord. You just got to know, Brother Jeffrey. It's a, it's a whole other side. Bless us, Lord. Amen. He's been a big blessing to me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to see Sister Lana and her grandson. And she told me that she'll never take strength for granted again. That devil jumped on her and she's been going through for about a month, ain't it? Or more. Amen. But thank God for putting strength in us. Bringing us honor where we Amen. God's going to get us through these hard times. Amen. I tell you, the Holy Ghost is real. And God is, is testifying to me. Don't walk by what you see. Amen. We don't walk by sight. We no. walk by faith. Yes. Amen. God's going to get us out of all these hard trials. Yes. Amen. You just got to get through the other side with your faith in time. Yes. Amen. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find yes. faith on the earth. And we're in an all-out attack on faith. Yes. Amen. But I'm holding on. Yes, I, am. I said, I'm holding on. I'm Anybody holding on? on? The Bible says holding faith yes. and a good conscience. You yes. got to hold on to faith. I the devil wants you to uh, cast it away. We're going to talk to you a little bit close to that, not exactly. But we always want to remind you every Sunday, if the Lord uh, say the same, we're praying. But if the Lord say the same, we will not be in service here on August 14th. That's Sunday, August 14th. The church here will be closed. And we don't take that lightly. We want to have these doors open. But there's really just no way, Lord's will, we're planning a trip to uh, Brother Blue's church. August the 12th and 13th, and we won't be coming back to the morning right. of the 14th. And I thought about leaving Saturday night, and I thought about not going myself. My wife said, you can't not go. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But uh, we, we want to have the doors open, but I just don't see a way. Amen. And we prayed about it. We looked at the dates, and that was really the best date. Yes. So uh, y'all get the word out. Let people know we will not be here on August the 14th. That Sunday, and we don't want people to show up uh, disappointed. We'll get a sign out there. Yes. But um, I believe the Lord uh, will bless us on this trip. Yes. Yes. Amen. We're going. Um, since Brother Blue's just from the old school evangelist, yes. he's a he's an evangelist pastor. Yes. <laughs> Brother Wills was a pastor evangelist, but Brother Blue is an evangelist pastor, yes. and he still got that fire. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord! And so we want to go and Amen. Get our fire built up. Praise the Lord. So if anybody's got a mind, Lord's will to go. We got a sheet back there for the bus. See, Brother Hunt, Sister Green is also one of our drivers for the trip. Brother Hunt is the main driver. He wants everybody to see him. So uh, if you want to ride the bus to uh, Joplin, it is. Neosho is just right outside Joplin. 
Um, so see Brother Hunt, if you make a reservation and you want to ride the bus, don't talk to him until you made your reservation. I say this in the country, we don't need nobody going by faith. You got 32 cents in your pocket and you just believe in God. Believe God at home. Praise the Lord. But if you're going on a trip, have some money. Somebody say amen. Or have somebody that's taking care of you that got some money. Praise the Lord. But don't don't go on faith and say, well, when I get that, y'all just leave me. I'll sleep in the van. You know, and, no, we, we, we ain't doing that. Praise the Lord. Amen. So if you want to go, amen, make plans and uh, call the hotel and reserve a room. I like to know when people do reserve rooms because we only reserve 15 for the open door group. And if we start running out, we need to put more in that group. So uh, be praying about that. Praise the Lord. Amen. We want to go into the word on today. Amen. Thank God for Sister Hunter. We we'll want to get her back up singing. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Sister Hunter. Yes, sir. Amen. Hide, hide that mask. Amen. We need to get her back up singing. She's been too quiet this last year. Amen. I don't know what's going on, but I've been telling her about herself. Get up. Amen. Let's go to uh, Ephesians, the third chapter. And we're really uh, praying for all these people that's going through right now. A lot of people going through. Amen. I tell you about the Lord is faithful. Y'all believe this? The Lord is faithful to his word. Amen. Let's read here in Ephesians 3, verse 11 and 12. According to to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith in him. Let me read verse 13. For I desire that ye faint not in my tribulations for you which is your glory. Go over a few pages to Philippians 1. Philippians is right after uh, Ephesians. And we want this first chapter of Philippians. This, just this um, verse 12 through 14. But I would ye should understand, brother, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places, and many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident in my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Let's go over to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews 10. And get into a couple of verses here. Hebrews 10. Look here at uh, verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. I want you to remember that clause. We're going to read that again in the sixth chapter, a little bit like that. Full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised. Now go down to uh, verse 35. I want to preach from this verse 35. Cast out away therefore your confidence which hath great recompense of reward. Father thank you for these Scriptures, thank you that you gathered by your own hand, your own spirit and grace, gathered into this place today. These that you've ordained to hear the word, those that may be hearing it otherwise electronically, or you have thus ordained for all of us to receive, to seat at your table on the day that you are in the midst of this crooked and perverse nation in this evil hour you're still preparing a table for your people in the presence of our enemies spreading a table in the wilderness 
giving bread to the hungry, ministering seed to the sower, multiply our seed sown, and increase the fruits of our righteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Cast not away your confidence. Let's back up to Hebrews, the sixth chapter. Now, there in the tenth chapter, we read to you about the full assurance of faith. Now, Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, look at this Hebrews 6, verse 11. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Now, I've often taught and said that. We see Brother Brady singing. We haven't seen him in a few weeks. Let's praise the Lord. He'll be in the house of prayer. We, we've often uh, taught us the Lord by His Spirit that faith and believing are not exactly the same thing. Faith is a noun, and believing is a verb. Something you do is faith is a car, then believing would be driving the car. Everybody that's got a car, I had a car before I had a license. Brother Hamilton brought Brother Williams' old car, and I had a car and didn't have a license, couldn't drive it, couldn't see to get a license. But later on, I was able to drive that car. And having a car don't mean nothing if you don't drive it. Amen. You know? It's the driving of the car that makes the car's purpose fulfilled. And so having faith is like a car. You got to do something with it. Yes. You know, and if faith is a car and believing is driving it, the Lord said that confidence is the gasoline in the car. Because everybody that's got faith, James said that you can have faith and don't have no works with it. You can have faith in your heart. God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. But just like you got to have gas in that car in order to drive it, you got to have confidence to, Bible calls it the uh, expression of your faith. He calls it the full assurance of your faith. To know that, God, if I use what you gave me, then it will be my favorite scriptures from my childhood, Proverbs. Right. This is from the days when me and my big sisters, three of them here, would sit in the middle of the services on Sunday and we'd study the Bible and I came across this one and it's been in my heart ever since. Proverbs 20. The devil wants you to think what you got is worthless. Because it ain't been working for you. It's been working for you. You still here, ain't you? Amen. God is working for you when you don't know he's working That's for you. That's a Esau despised his birthright. Look at this Proverbs 20 and verse 14. You ever have somebody trying to buy something from you? Yeah. They say, it ain't worth that much. They all say that. Oh, it ain't worth that much. You go to dealership trading in your car. They just taking your money. They don't give you none. They say, oh, we're giving you $3,000. You know that coin ain't worth nothing but $58.26. They're going to give you $3,000. You know what the other $2,000? They're going to tack it on to the price of the coin you buy. They ain't giving you nothing. They tell you how. Well, every time you try to sell something, the salesman say it ain't worth that. But if you sell it to him cheap, he's going to go and sell it for more than he bought yes, it for. He That's what this scripture is saying here. Yes. This is what the devil trying to convince us that our confidence in God is worthless. It is not. It is not, saith the buyer, it's worthless. If it's worthless, why are you trying to get it? Amen. If it's worthless, why are you negotiating? Devil, if what I got is worthless, why are you every morning, noon, and night trying to steal it away from me if it ain't worth nothing? If it ain't worth nothing, leave me alone. But if the devil is trying to get it from you, it must be worth something. Amen. If the devil is fighting you morning, noon, and night, you must have something he's trying to separate you from. 
But what he'll tell you is, it's worthless. It ain't worthless. No, it's not. I've been in trials where I thought it was worthless, but God had mercy on me and brought me out of it. Thank you, Jesus. It is not, it is not, said the buyer, but when he is gone his way, what does he do? He boasts. I got that one. I got that one, man. I made them think that it was worthless, and now they've cast away their confidence. Uh-uh. Here's over here, Proverbs 23, 23. I preached this once on Oreo when I was young. Buy the truth and sell it not. Anybody buying and not selling? Yes. Amen. Buy the truth and don't sell it. It's valuable. Yes. Hebrews 12. Let's see what Esau afterward. See, when the devil leaves you and he's got your confidence, then he rejoices. He, does. he boasts. I got that one. They got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. They say they would never backslide, but I got them now. Hebrews 12. Esau said, I'm at the point to die. Why am I holding on to something that ain't no good to me? But Jacob knew his value, didn't he? Yes. Jacob knew it was valuable. Yes. The Bible says Esau despised his birthright, yes. but then later on, he realized what he had got rid of. Everybody that cast away their confidence, there'll be a day you'll realize what you let go of. Paul said, don't cast it away. It is priceless. If you know you can go to a living God and talk to him, you have more money than Warren Buffett, Oprah Winfrey, all these rich people put together. If you know I can go to the living God. Because one day they're going to throw that money in the streets. Amen. One day they're going to throw that money in the streets. Amen. The money that the church got, from the nephew tell you, I say, let's spend it. Don't let's, let's sit in the bank. Let's buy something we can use. That's right. Amen. One day they're going to throw money in the streets. Right. What you got is more valuable than money. Yo, Over here to Hebrews 12, verse 17. What happened to Esau? He was at the point to die. He thought he wasn't going to die. He was just tired. He was dead tired, but it wasn't worth his birthright. Amen. Verse 16. Lest there be, let me start at verse 15. Looking diligently, lest any man run out of grace, is what they're saying. Fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person. What does profane mean? Profane don't mean you're just doing a lot of cursing. That's part of profanity. Profane means you have no appreciation for that which is holy. That's what profane means. Esau despised his birthright. Or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. He cast away his confidence. But then what happened in verse 17? For you know how that afterwards, somebody say afterwards. afterwards. When he would have inherited the blessing. He was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. He regretted casting away his confidence. Over here the first John, the third chapter. You got a reason to keep praying. You got a reason to stay in church. You got a reason to live right. Even though sometimes it don't look right. Sometimes it look like evil people are prospering more than good people. Yes. Sometimes it look like you do well and do right and you suffer for it. Yes. Anybody ever do the right thing and got bit for it? Yes. Anybody try to help somebody, amen, and they did wrong to you? Yes. Anybody ever trust somebody and they stab you in the back? Devil wants you to get bitter. I ain't going to help nobody. I ain't going to trust nobody. Uh-uh. Don't get bitter. Just say, Lord, thank you that I had it to give. You lend somebody a hundred dollars. They don't pay you back. Hey, Amen. Don't fret over it. Just let them have it. Amen. Amen. I ain't fighting nobody over money. Amen. Praise the Lord. People get killed over $25. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, people get in gunfight. You seen even, I've seen people on the news that shot Fast food workers because they didn't get their own right. People are going crazy. You got to 
let people have stuff. You got your peace of God, your peace of mind is worth more than any little bit of money or cheeseburger or somebody disrespecting you. It's people all over St. Louis shooting people because they didn't look at them right, disrespecting me. Gang members right out here on this parking lot. People are crazy right now. I'd rather have my peace. I'll let you take it if you want to. Take it if you want. Amen. If you don't want to pay me back, fine. Have it. Amen. I got peace with God. I know. I'm going to tell you something. When you live for God, ain't nothing nobody can do to you to make you less. He'll always bring you back out on the top. You may go down for a little bit, but the Lord will lift you right back up on top. Ain't nothing the devil can do to diminish you because you have a birthright. You have a heritage. You have a father you can go to. First John. The third chapter. Can I have a few more minutes? God ain't going to let you come out with the short end of the stick. Let them have it. Is that what happened with Abraham and Lot? Abraham and Lot's servants were fighting because the land was not able to bear both of them. Too much sheep, too much. So they got in the fight, and they and, and that man, they said, Lot said, man, we, we can't we can't live like this no more. Abraham said, well, look here, Lot, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. We're brethren. We ain't gonna fight about this. Oh, you gotta have the right spirit. I'm asking the Lord created me a clean heart and renew me a right spirit. Abraham said, we be brother, we ain't going to fight. Abraham said, Lot, take whichever part. Look all around you, whichever part you want. Oh, hallelujah to you. When God blesses on your life, you always going to come out the head and not the tail. You always going to be above and not beneath. And you're fighting for scraps. And God got a whole buffet over here for you. Let them have that little stuff. Walk away with your peace and your confidence in God intact. So Abraham said, Lot, whatever you want, take whichever. And the Bible says, Lot lifted his eyes and looked over there towards Solomon. Oh, it's so beautiful over there. Amen. Like Isaiah was saying, all ain't gold that glitters. Devil holds up in front of you. Uh uh, you want the will of God for your life. And if God say take this little bit, amen, God can take that little bit and put his blessing on it, and you'll come out way ahead of somebody who's look. That's what he did. Lot took what looked like the best and turned it into a curse. Man, if you bought real estate in Sodom, you just was. I don't want to say out of luck, because ain't no luck, but you, you came out on a short end. So Lot took Sodom because Sodom looked bad. And he left Abraham the part that didn't look as good. And then after Abraham and Lot separated, then God came back to Abraham and said, lift up your eyes. Say, look around you to the north, south, east, and west. He said, everything you see, I'm going to give it to you. Amen. Lot down there in Lot, lot down there in Sodom. Amen. And the LGBTQ start marching down Main Street. He had to shut his window, had to keep his daughters inside. Oh, my God, what have I done? And then God rained down fire and brimstone. What did he have then? Nothing. But he took what looked like the best. But Abraham got what looked like the worst and God blessed him just like he said as the stars of heaven and as the sand of the sea God began to bless the blessing of the Lord make it rich and he added no sorrow with it can you trust him can you believe God that no matter what I got to go through I may be low right now but it's going to work out for my good I'm not casting away my confidence I'm not going to be separated from my God because of what I'm going through Cause God can take the least and make it the most. They will say they don't respect you. You the least. That's all right. Be the least. David was the least in his father's house, but a prophet came by. Amen. They didn't think about him out there in the field till a prophet came by, and they said, "Yeah, I got one more son." And God lifted him up above all his brothers. God will make you the head and not the tail. Don't cast away your confidence. God's going to move for you. He's hearing your prayer. Amen. I don't care what it is. Talk to him about it. You know what God desires? He desires truth in the inward part. Be honest with God. People don't know how to talk to God. Amen. I'm going to tell you, don't come to God trying to pretend you something you ain't. Talk to God. If you got a problem, say, God, I like this. I like smoking these cigarettes, but I know they're going to kill me. People try to act like, oh, God, I hate cigarettes. No, you don't. Why are you still buying them at $7 a pack? 
talk to God like, God, I hate these things. God, I want to be free from these things. And God, if you'll help me, amen, what the devil wants you to do is cast away your confidence and say, don't pray no more because God knows you like what you're doing. Uh-uh, I'm going to pray because I know I like what I'm doing, but what I'm doing is killing me, so I'm going right back to God because there's only one Savior. Ain't nothing else going to help me but Jesus, so I'm not casting away my confidence. I'm going right back to him. Y'all give me a little time, I'm going to tell you about condemnation. Condemnation wants to separate you from God and say, don't talk to him. Amen. You're a sinner. you this and you're that. Maybe I am, but I'm going to the one that can help me. I'm going right back to Jesus. I ain't separating myself from right? <laughs> People stop coming to church because you mad at somebody in the church. I don't care about you. You don't stop going to Walmart. Huh? You don't stop going to J.C. Penney. You don't stop going to Amazon.com. Hey Amen. Even though they did treat you dirty, you go right back. How am I going to stop coming to the house of God? How am I going to cast away my confidence? Hey Amen. When I know this is where my help is. I cannot be separated. I'm not casting this away. I'm not selling it. Hey Amen. Maybe it looks like it's worthless today, but I'm not selling my birthright. Because it's going to be worth something one day. One day when I cast this in, it's going to be worth more than a million dollars. One day when I get up to heaven and I still got faith in my heart and I still been living right, I'm going to trade all my sorrow, all my heartache, all my heartbreak, and I'm going to give it to Jesus. And he said, here's a crown of life. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Don't cast away your confidence. Come right back to God. Amen. Just to give the devil a black eye, come to church. Get in prayer. Read your Bible just to defeat the devil. <laughs> First John 3. My little children, let us not worry in word. This is verse 18. Neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth. And shall do what to our heart? Assure. Hebrews 6 called it the full assurance of faith. Hebrews 10 called it the full assurance of hope. He said you can put confidence back in your heart toward God. Assure our hearts before him. Notice this verse 20. Oh, I know you've been there because I've been there. Anybody ever done something so bad, you don't even feel like God won't be bothered with you? Huh? Anybody ever messed up so bad? Devil tell you, ain't no sense in praying now. God ain't trying to hear you. Ain't no sense in going up. You walk up in that church, it's going to fall down. <laughs> church ain't going to fall down. He, he receives sinners. He's waiting for you. His blood, amen, is, is stronger than any sin you got. I don't care if you murdered somebody. His blood is stronger than anything you got. Come back to him. Have confidence that you can talk to him just like Brother Turner. He don't hear Brother Charles no more than he hear you. He hears you. Yes, he does. Amen. He's waiting. He don't hear my prayer any more than he hears you. He wants to hear your prayer. He is eager for you to come there. What he wants is for you to be honest with him. Yes, don't try to deceive him. Oh, Heavenly Father. How was that, Brother Michael? Pray, let me listen to the tape again. Uh-uh. You ain't got to sound like me. You better sound like you. Yes, sir. You better talk to him like you. That's why we don't get nowhere with God. We're trying to impress him. You can't impress him with your word. You got to, he desires truth in the inward part. Tell him how you're feeling. Confess to him what's going on with you. That's my confidence. That if I come to you and say, God, I'm guilty. He'll say, I ain't going to condemn you. These other folks here throwing stones at you because they caught you in adultery, but I ain't going to condemn you. He lifted up his eyes, looked at that woman, and they said, they said, Lord, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Moses said, stone her, but what do you say? They thought they had him trapped. They didn't have him trapped because there's always an answer from God. That's why I said, don't let the devil get you in an A or B scenario. There's got to be this or that. Uh-uh. God's got an answer that the devil ain't even thought about. God's got wisdom. Oh, I wanted to preach on this this morning. Amen. But he answers hard questions. With him is dissolving of doubt. Ain't a sentence too hard that God ain't got an answer for. The devil think he got you backed into a corner, but God's got a way out. If he got to open the Red Sea, he's got a way made already. You ain't thought about it. They will say, you got to do this or that. Uh-uh, I'm going to stand still until God tell me what to do. Amen. So what did Jesus do? He stooped down with his finger. 
Now, they thought he had to either say adultery ain't nothing, leave it alone, or he had to say stone A or B, you got to do one or the other. So Jesus just took down. Yes, he did. What are you saying, Pastor? Sometimes you got to know when to shut up. That's true. Sometimes our tongues get us into trouble. Sometimes we act like we know more than we know. You know, you ain't that smart. Sometimes a devil, been th the devil thinking while you sleep and how to trip you up and you need wisdom from God. That's why you got to pray every day. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Because the devil's thinking while, while you're on vacation. The devil thinking about how to trip you up. You need some wisdom from God. Amen. And they were always trying to catch Jesus in his word. Amen. And man, it looked like they had him right now. So he stood down with his finger. Yes, Y'all read John 8? Yes. And he rolled on the ground as though he heard them not. I ain't trying to hear that noise. I ain't trying to hear you talk to me about one of my children. Amen. Maybe they were in sin, but I ain't trying to hear that stoning. Amen. This is a new law. It's a new sheriff in town, and I'm bringing in a new covenant, and we ain't killing people. James and John say, Lord, the Samaritans don't want to receive us. You want us to call down fire from heaven? He said, God don't know what kind of spirit you're of. I didn't come to destroy men's lives. I come to save men's lives. Yes. He ain't out to stone nobody. Oh, hallelujah. we need to find out what kind of Jesus we're serving. So he said, I ain't trying to hear that noise. And he stooped down and he just rolled on the ground with his feet. Amen. The Bible says, though he heard them not. Yes. And the Bible says he lifted up himself. God's always got to answer you. Ain't no other. Oh, hallelujah. Don't let the devil put you in no corner, say it's A and B. Uh uh, I'm waiting on God. Jesus lifted up himself and said, Let he that is without sin cast the first stone. And he just went back down. He didn't even look to see what the result. When God give a word, you ain't got to hang around to see the result. It's already done. It's like pushing a popcorn button on the microwave. It's already done. Yes, it is. <laughs> he came that way and he didn't even look to see what was going on. He just started writing again. Then finally, he lived. the Bible said they started going from the elders to the least. They start dropping them stones. Oh my God, he does what I'm saying. Oh Lord, I'm the one that was with her. I better get out of here. Amen. The other one said, I was with her last week. I better leave. The other one said, I was a thief. Everybody began to leave because they were convicted by their own conscience. He didn't condemn them, they condemned themselves. Yes. Judge not that you be not judged. Amen. For what judgment you meet, it shall be mentioned to you again. Be careful how you condemn other people. Amen. So Jesus lifted up his eyes. He said, woman, where are those that are accused? Have no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord. Oh, I love Jesus. If you don't love Jesus, there's something wrong with you. You need to check your heart. Amen. Make sure you still got one beating in your chest. Because how can you help but love her? He said, neither do I condemn thee. See, people want the non-condemnation, but they don't want what he said. Then he said, go and sin no more. See, people that say, don't judge me, they don't hear that part. But he said, now nah, stop your sin. I'm giving you a word. I'm giving you mercy. I'm giving you grace. Now go out there and don't live how you used to live. Amen. People leave that part off. But there is a part of Jesus that tells you, don't go and do that no more. Yes, it is. Oh, hallelujah. We don't want to hear that. Yes, it is. Let me go back here. I'm going to try to let you go. If our heart condemns, what did he tell that woman? I don't condemn you. You know what condemns you? Your own heart. Yes. Your own conscience. Yes. Amen. You don't have that assurance. Mm -hmm. But God said, I'm still on your side. Yes, he is. If our heart condemns us, God is greater yes, is. than our heart. And notice this last call. He knows how many things. Yes. Awesome. Anybody ever read Psalm 139? He said, you know my thoughts are far off. If that a fall off don't mean a thousand miles. That means a thousand years before I was even born. You knew what I would be thinking. You knew what I would be doing. There's not a word in my tongue, oh Lord, that you don't know it all together. God knows everything about you, and he's still saving you. And he still died for you. And he still loved you. And he still gave you the Holy Ghost. And he still gave you grace to be in the house of God on the day. Even though he knows that. He knows stuff about you that your closest friend don't know. He knows stuff that your husband or your wife don't know. He knows your dirty underwear. He knows all your secrets. And he says, still, I love you anyway. You can't let people know about your bad stuff. They won't love you no more. But he said, I know everything about you. And still, I love you. Y'all not reading this Bible. Y'all don't believe this Bible. Y'all believe something else. But he said, God is greater than our heart, and he knows all things. Yes, he does. Beloved, not our God, if our heart condemns us. 
Y'all read this? Yes. If our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart knows all this. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we what? I know I can go to him. I know I can talk to him. I may not be worthy, but I'm not. See, the Bible says in Romans, there's no condemnation of them who are in Christ. See, God don't put condemnation on you. God will convict you before you sin. He'll convict you when you need to repent. But after you repent, he doesn't hold stuff over your head. Like some people do. Stuff you did in 1975, yeah. stuff you did in 2010. He ain't trying to hear that noise. No. He cast your sin behind his back. He don't think about it again. And then Paul said, when I got saved, this is how I keep pressing y'all. He said, I keep forgetting those things which are behind. Oh, yeah. right. I ain't going to try to remember that. Uh, I ain't bringing that up. Devil have you sitting around thinking about what you've done. I'm forgetting those things. Yes, T-T-I-N-G. I keep forgetting. Every time somebody bring it up, I forget it. Forget you, forgot you, never thought about you. Covered under the blood. That's what we said when we was young. <laughs> if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. What does confidence do? It's the gas in your tank. Yeah. It makes you express your faith. Yeah, yeah. James said you can have faith and don't do nothing with it. But he said faith without works is what? Dead, Dead being alone. You got to do something with it. Yeah. You got to use what faith you have. And our primary use of faith is to come to him yes, and talk to him. Nah. Don't let condemnation stand in your nah, way. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God and whatsoever we ask. Is that what Jesus said yeah. over there in John? Amen. If you ask anything in my name, what did he say? I will, I will do it. Whatsoever we ask, we were seeing. What did Jesus say there at Lazarus' tomb? I'm trying to let y'all go. He prayed and bowed his head and said, Father, I thank you that you hear me. Yes. Notice what he said. I know that you hear me all. I know he hear me. If God sees every bad thing you do and hears every bad thing you say, right. then he hears every time you pray. Yes. You got to just have confidence to wait on him to answer you. Yes. If our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence in whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandment. When he says, go and sin no more, you have to say, yes, Lord, that's what I'm doing. Amen. Even if you make a mistake afterwards. Amen. Lack of confidence keeps you from committing to the word. Yes. But when your confidence is in him and not in yourself, All you'll right. commit to the word. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. That's Amen. one person that agree with Amen. Devil said, devil said, don't, don't, don't say you're going to do that. Don't, 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 don't say, God is telling you to go on a fast. Don't say you're going to go on a fast because you're going to break it. Say it anyway. Amen. That's confidence. That's using your faith. Faith got to say something. Faith is going to speak and say something yes. out of your mouth. It is the expression of your faith. Yes, it is. Paul called it in one place boldness. Thank you, Lord. Get out there and say something. Yes. I'm going to do something for God. The devil say, oh, yeah, what, when, where, how? I ain't worried about that. I'm doing something for God. When you don't say nothing, you ain't going to do nothing. That's true. You know what devil, What David did before he slew Goliath? He told him what I'm going to do to you. Yes, Everybody else back there shaking in the foxhole. David said, uh-uh, is there not a cause? Is there, amen, why why y'all back here in these foxholes? He stepped out there on that battlefield. Amen. And Goliath despised him. This little runt coming out. What you going to do? He said, I'll tell you what you going to do. You come to me with sword and spirit, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. And I'm going to take your head off you. And I'm going to feed your carcass to the fowls of the Hadn't done nothing, but he spoke it. We don't want to say that. When you go on a job in the group, go and say, I'm going to get my job. Amen. Oh, we scared to talk. We ain't going to talk because we ain't got no confidence. Amen. When you leave that doctor's office, the last thing you tell him is by his stripes, I am healed. I'm healed. Devil don't want to say nothing. When you ain't got no confidence, you ain't going to say nothing. You know how many times, anybody ever had a bully? I did when I was young. You know how many times you get beat up when you got a bully? You get beat up 20 times. <laughs> You're still getting hurt every day you go to school. But you're scared. Not Sister Rice. Everybody else was scared. <laughs> Sister Rice said, Pastor, I wish you would forget my past. I'm going to try, Sister Rice. <laughs> Sister McKee, y'all didn't mess with your auntie, did you? Ooh, that's the wrong one. Anyway, <laughs> some of us had bullies, and we were scared of them bullies. And then they said, Cobb dies a thousand times. 
And they just beat you up and beat you up. But when you finally stand up to your bully, you realize they weren't as strong as you thought they were. But what you were, it wasn't that you were scared to get hurt because you were getting hurt every time you went to school. Every time they put your hand in that toilet, you was hurt. When they shoved you in the locker, you was hurt. When they gave you a wedgie, you was hurt. When they beat you up, you was hurt. You was getting hurt all the time. You just needed some confidence. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So praise the Lord. Amen. I finally got some confidence and swung on my bullet and knocked him down. Just like Brother William did with him. I said, oh my God. Then he wanted to be my friend. Montel Williams. It wasn't the Montel Williams, y'all. But that was his name. He beat me up, and finally one day he took that tapioca. Y'all remember tapioca pudding? Yeah. They used to have at school, and he it. saved his from lunchtime all the way to the end of school. And right before I got off the spoon, but he smashed it in my ear. Oh my! Oh, God. I this has got to end. Because <laughs> I was getting humiliated every day. Hey Amen. Uh, man, when I cleaned his clock and he picked himself up off the ground, he wanted to be my friend. You got to have some confidence. Because yeah. hey, you get hurt anyway. The devil walking over you anyway. Why not say something? The devil trying to put sickness on you anyway. Why not say I'm healed? Why not stand up in church? Hey, Amen. The devil said, don't say that because you're lying. Uh, why not stand up in church in spite of what the devil said and say I'm healed, y'all? Hey, Amen. The devil said, I got A, B, C, and D. But the Bible said, by his stripes, I'm healed. And I ain't claiming what the devil said. I'm healed. I got confidence toward God because the devil won't put condemnation on you. He said, you sick for a reason. Yeah, it's something you did. We don't know what you did, but you did something. It's, it's some reason. It's some reason you got thrown off that truck. Now, come on, tell me the truth now. <laughs> oh yeah, you did. You did something, boy. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna sign on that life, but you did something. Oh, I ain't getting nothing to deserve that. Because even if I sin, I have an advocate with the Father, and He said, "If my heart don't condemn me, I can keep my confidence." That I can pray to. Oh, we feel good when we fast for three days and we pray all night long and we go, uh uh, even when you've done bad, you can still come to this altar. Because your heart don't condemn you. Amen. Second Timothy, I'm going to let y'all go. The devil got us scared. He's a big old bully. Say something. Speak something out of your mind. God, you're going to move for me. I don't have to know when. I don't have to know how. That ain't my business. Amen. My business is what your word is saying. And if you said it in your word, I'm claiming it. I believe it. Hallelujah. I'm claiming salvation. I said I was going to get saved before I got saved. Amen. I talked about it. Didn't y'all talk about it? You didn't you know what salvation was. But some of us didn't know what it was. We talked about it. I'm going to church. I'm getting, Sister Brown, you said I'm getting the Holy Ghost. I don't know how to get the Holy Ghost. I don't know when, but I know that them folks speaking in tongues and rolling on the floor and living right. I want the Holy Ghost. You begin to talk about God. You got to open your mouth with confidence and say God is going to move. Tell somebody. If any two of us on earth agree, amen, tell somebody that think like you think. Because people that love you, <laughs> That's just us, Les. Y'all give me a few more minutes. People that love you, they want you to do what the doctor say. Because that's just their love and concern. But people that know faith like you know faith, when you say Jesus is my healer, amen, you can't fight against that. When somebody say, I ain't doing no more what the doctor say because the Lord has healed me. Amen. I've been in situations where people I love and my flesh said, oh God, oh God. But somewhere your faith got to say, I know he's a healer. I know God has healed me without a doctor. I know Jesus is a healer, and the devil wants to cast away our confidence, but he still heals the sick. Yes, he does. And when somebody says, I'm believing God, amen, you need somebody to agree with you on earth that Jesus is a healer. Yes, he is. He's a healer whether you take medicine or whether you don't take it. It's according to your faith. Am I still in your body? Yes, Be it under you according to how you believe it. And you need to find somebody who believes like you believe. Some people can't get past medicine and doctor's care. Amen. Well, God bless them. I'm not condemning them. But if your faith has lifted you up, and I ain't talking about hope. I ain't talking about cross fingers and rabbit's feet. I'm talking about something in your heart saying, I know God has healed me. When you got that kind of faith, find somebody that's got light, precious faith to agree with you. And open your mouth and testify to me. Hallelujah. 
My brothers and my sisters, they scared. They, they scared for me, but I know you believe like I believe. Amen. I'm healed. Do you believe I'm here? Child, I know you're healed. I know God is working in you. I know God. Find somebody to talk to about it. Amen. We need to talk about it. Talk about God. They, they that knew the Lord spake often one to another and a book of remember. God will remember. If he hear you talking about him, he'll remember that he's in here. We don't think we need to remind God. You need to remind God of who he is sometimes. And you do that by talking about him to somebody else. Amen. Oh, we don't believe this Bible. Go and read Malachi. The Bible says when they spake often one to another, a book of remembrance was open. Yes, I do heal the sick. I hadn't, I hadn't been healing nobody in open door in a while. I hope somebody praying and believing God with me. We need to drive this sick devil out of this church. Anybody agree with me we can drive this sickness demon out of open door? We got too many people in the hospital, amen, that's got a word of God that say by his stripes we're healed. And we have to depend too much on doctor, but he heals without a doctor. Can I get somebody to say amen? Can I get somebody to agree with me that the Lord is our healer? Talk to somebody about it. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Crawl up out of that hole yes. and say with your mouth that God is going to move for me. Oh, I ain't got to figure it out. I don't have to know the when, the where, and the how. The devil said, oh yeah, how? That ain't my business. They asked the Lord, Lord, will you at this time? He said, the time ain't your business. Yeah, that's God's business. Amen. Your business is to wait on me till I come. Is that what he said in Acts chapter 1? It ain't none of your business when it's time. We want to know how long, oh Lord. How long in my business? My business is he's already done it at the cross. How long it takes to be manifested, that ain't my business, but I'm going to wait on him until he comes. Let me read this here and let y'all go home. Second Timothy, the first chapter. Don't cast away your confidence. It's going to pay off in the end. It has great recompense or reward. People that prospect for gold Say you wouldn't recognize it when you saw it because it don't look like gold all the time. It hasn't been refined. It takes somebody with a trained eye to know what real gold is. Second Timothy 1, 6 and 7. God has put something in you. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. God put something in Timothy. Amen. And he said it was in your grandmama and your mama first. And then what he said? Notice this verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. No. Notice he didn't say a spirit of fear. He said the spirit of fear. There is one demon specifically designed to put fear in your heart so that you don't say nothing, you don't move forward, you don't try your ministry, you don't get up to testify. Some of you got testimony that you sitting on that you scared to get up and say something. Amen. The devil said, you don't sound right. What is how you sound? You sound weird. Get up and talk anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> Moses said, I can't talk right. He said, look here, didn't I make your tongue? <laughs> he has not given you the spirit of fear. No, he hasn't. But what kind of spirit did he give us? Power. He gave us power, love, love and what kind of mind? mind? A sound mind. You know what an unsound mind? An unsound mind will sit in the dark and imagine all the things that can go wrong. No, if you try. But a sound mind say, God, you said it. You, I'm going to do it. Perfect love does what? Cast out fear. That's the spirit that God gave us. Don't cast away your confidence. Praise the Lord for the word today if you receive it. Father in Jesus' name, we thank you for the confidence you put in our hearts as human beings. You didn't deal to some men the measure of faith. You dealt to every man the measure of faith. Help us to put gas in that tank to know that no matter where we are in our development, we can come to you. Lord, that you'll wash us. You'll take away our sin. You'll break the yokes off our lives. You'll turn around our circumstance. You'll heal our bodies. You'll get us out of troubles. You'll get us out of legal troubles. You'll get us out of health problems. You'll get us out of relationship problems. You'll turn things around. You'll pay our taxes. You'll put food in our refrigerator. Lord, you'll make a way when it seems like there's no way. Lord, if we just put our confidence in you, put our faith in you, Put it in drive, Lord, and start moving forward, doing something with our faith. Give us that full assurance of faith, full assurance of hope. Lord, we know that faith is the substance of things we hope for and the evidence of things we don't see. 
but cause our hearts to be fully assured that it will work for us. Help every hearer to not cast away their confidence in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord one more time. Thank you for your attention.